بعد وش مدى وين الوحوية رفاتك عن صوم الري 400 people, 500 people, so that we can cross the border again, the sea, to Italy. Can almost here 21 days. We are having food, we are eating. But to go to toilet is our problem. And many people are sick here. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game United TV. My name is Amit Jallo and as from today, I'll be hosting a TV show called Let's Have a Talk. In this TV show, we are going to talk about fashion, lifestyle and especially concentrate on young Gambians living in Germany, UK or other desperating countries where Gambians are living. Today, I'm going to have an interview with Mr. Prince Kani. Welcome, Mr. Prince. Yeah, um, welcome. Thanks so very much. I'm so glad to, to be in your show. Would you introduce yourself for our viewers, please? Yeah, um, my name is Prince Kani. I'm originally from Gambia. I was born and raised up in Gambia. Came to Germany two years ago. Um, in this interview, we're going to talk about um, the back way, especially how young Gambians take the back way to come to Europe, to Germany or to Italy or other um, European countries. And there is a statement that like many people say that the back way is one of the most dangerous way to get to Europe, but at the same time, it's the only way to get to Europe. So what do you think about the statement? Yeah, obviously, I would say um, <coughs> the statement is true. Yeah, it's a very dangerous um, journey that one has to take to get to Europe. Now, obviously, because I experience it um, personally, mm -hmm. and I know the kind of um, risks that somebody faces when, when you're taking the journey to Europe. As you just said, you took this journey yourself. May I ask you some question about it? Like, um, why did you decide to take the back way, and why did you not um, apply for a visa? Yeah, because I see it's the only means of me getting to Europe. So because getting a visa in my country to come to Europe has a lot of requirements which um, I cannot I cannot get. Mm -hmm. So I can only get to Europe through back way. So um, how did you start your journey? Like how did you get to Libya in the first place? Like um, all Gambians who to, um, go to like through this journey, they all go to Libya. So how did you get to Libya in the first place? Yeah, people have different means of getting to Libya. Some come through flight from Gambia to Libya. Um, but personally, I came through, through a car from Gambia to Niger, then from Niger to Libya. So you paid these people to get into this car and then you traveled. Like I heard some people, they traveled through the Sahara for many days. Is that true? Yeah, it depends on how many days you're going to take. Mm -hmm. Some stay longer. And some of us like two, three days, they will get to Libya. It depends how the driver knows the way. So, like when you got to Libya, like is the situation real? How they saw it? How they um, sell it in the TV? Like we see people living, like twenty or more people living in a small room, or people getting beaten and such as, like more hurtful things. Like, is this true? How media shows it? Is that really the real thing of Libya? Yeah, actually, when you said Libya is like it's very big and people live in different part of Libya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, I was living with a lot of people in the same place, and maybe personally, I did not experience that what the media is showing. But I also believe it is happening in Libya. So also the media, like we see on TV, like especially in Germany, we see like they like they are selling people like slaves. Is that true? Did you saw it somewhere? Like you said, you didn't experience it, but maybe you have heard it from somebody. Yeah, maybe the time I was coming, it was like kind of easier than the present present situation um, because I also used to see it on news. Like, like now in Libya, they are selling people. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it could happen there. So, what kind of hardship or struggle did you face there in Libya, and what was like the most? painful or hurtful like memory you had in Libya like um, some people say they get raped in Libya or they get really bad beaten or uh, caught uh, like got shot or something like did you experience that yourself um, I would say no 
Mm -hmm. I've not experienced that in Libya. Um, but I've seen I've also seen people that have the same story that you're talking about. Like they've been jail in Libya, they've been in jail for two, three months, and they've been seriously beaten. Yeah, especially especially the females. You know, they they got a lot of troubles in Libya. But personally, I would I would say that I did not experience such a thing in Libya. But did you ever think of giving up as if like you saw like people getting beaten or raped or other things like did it make you think of like giving up and just going back to your family? No, when I was in Libya, I think the only focus on one thing that I want to get to Europe, I want to get to Europe and that was the only vision I was having in me. So like the only thing it was giving me is like encouragement that I want to get to my, you know, my destination that you know, I, I, I planned for it. So I was never having such a mind in me like to give up. Under such circumstances, we tend to search for people who stand with us when we have having a hard time or when we're facing struggles. Did you make friends in Libya? And if yes, did you still have contact with them? And where are they now? Like, yeah, um, I can say I found the best friend in my life in Libya. He's like the um, the most generous person I've ever met in my life since I'm making start making friends, and it was like um, like it was a family to me because um, I was I was always secure when I was with him. So we met on the journey. We take the journey together. Like he was very help, helpful to me whenever I need him, or whenever I need help, he was always beside me. Um obviously we, we all made the journey together. We come to we come to Europe together and he's also staying in Germany he and we're still in contact. Like we we often live visit each other. It's nice to hear. Um what was the first thing you did when you came to Europe? Like we see on T V sometimes when people get to Europe they just like feel like this you just see the their faces with joy and happiness, like and relief that they got to Europe, like what did you, what was the first thing you did when you came to Europe like when you touched European ground? Yeah, I think like might be everybody who touched at that moment touched the European ground gonna be happy because after taking the struggle, mm -hmm. after taking the long way months that you spend on the way that like when you reach your final destination, I think the only thing that comes to your heart is like happiness, yeah. joyfulness and like like you would say like you you have, you have achieved your dream. So you took, um, you went from Gambia to Libya and from Libya to Italy, right? Yeah. So why and how did you leave Italy to come to Germany? Yeah, that's a good question. I think like when I get to Italy, like I don't feel like that's my, my good destination. Um, because I also have my own dreams that when I was coming to Europe, what I want to achieve when I'm here. So living in Italy, like I was not seeing such dreams coming to to my way. So I feel like um, let me let me go forward. Obviously, it was not my plan to come to Germany, mm -hmm. but I said let me go forward and see like where can I get my green pasture, what I was looking for. So, so I finally finally set up myself in Germany. So, but what was there a significant thing like something that made you think okay now I have to go to Germany like. Why did what what made you think like not staying in Italy? Educational ground. Educational ground. Is it something you couldn't do in Italy? Like a subject you couldn't um, study in Italy, or you didn't get into the university in Italy? Yeah, like when I was in Italy, like I got one of Italian friend on, so I always have a like chat with this guy and. He always asks me why why do you come to Europe? So I tell him my opinions and tell tell him my reasons why I come to Europe. So she told me that the best way you can achieve what you have in your mind is like you go to Germany. Maybe you have the all the possibilities that you can achieve what you want to achieve. Like you can go to school, you can go to university if that is your dream. In Italy he is not it's not really easy. Mm -hmm. So that's like a German encouragement to come to here. And um, how much did your whole journey cost you, like from Gambia to Germany? And how did you get it? How did you make it, like all the money? Yeah, I, 
I'm not sure that that's gonna be necessary to to talk about how much it cost me to come to to come to Europe. What was important, like I was able to make it to come to Europe. Well, like many people say, they spend thousands of uh, dollars, or people also say that they spend thousands of euros. Like, what do you think? Is like the amount you would say cost you? Yeah, people spend different amounts mm -hmm. because. Um, the way you took the journey and the way you want to spend on the journey so it's different individuals have different spending and individual have supporting background different supporting background so the amount that people use on the way is 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 different like personally what i spend and might what the other guy is going to spend is, is is a little bit different but to me it was not important how much i spend it was important that to get to the destination that i want to get to and how did you get that money like you don't want to say off the current now it was like it's not it's not actually important how i get that money that what is important that i get to my destination yeah but how did you make it like we all know you need money to get to the car obviously to go to Niger, uh, Niger and then to go further so there is a cost how, how, how would you say it's like below 2,000 euro or more like what do you think yeah then um, what I would say like actually I cannot tell you the amount that I spent on the journey because I was not the one sponsoring myself okay so you did not work for the money you came I did not work you for did. the money okay and as you came to Germany after you left Italy, what were the challenges you faced and um, what do you want to achieve here in Germany? Mm, good question. I think um, the challenges that I faced in Germany here first was the language. Mm -hmm. And because like um, when you look at back home where I'm from, Gambia, we speak English. So it's like a new different language for me. So it means I have to drop everything that I'm doing and to start from the... to start from zero mm. like learning a new language that I've, I've never had a word from it so that was a it was a real challenge and my achievement that i want to get here in germany is like um education is always my dream mm. so what i want to get here is want to study go to university get my degrees and then like is there a special job you want to have like a dream job somebody like other people want to be lawyers or doctors like do you have like one special job you would like to do in germany after you got your degree yeah i think um, this is something that i always share with people the job that i want normally when i when i ask when people ask me like personal feeling that i have because like when i was in gambia i was studying accountancy so this is, like how i build my life on mm. um but the other side when i also talk to people they feel like you know i'm very good with speech and other stuff. So m most of the people are encouraging me to become a, like a politician. But right, recently what I'm having in my mind, what, what I have, what I want to build as a career, I want, I want to be an accountant. And if possible, I also want to work on some accountant, especially in the banks. Mm -hmm. And do you think that you can fulfill this dream here in Germany? Is it possible for you? Yeah, why not? I'm, I'm on a good way. Um, and I hope that I always believe in myself, no matter how long and hard it takes, I'm always going to be on the right path i know it's not gonna be easy though it's not it's not an easy road and it has it takes me backward a little bit but um, with the encouragement with the belief i have in myself and with the vision that i have nothing can stop me from achieving my dreams so are there people or do you have friends in germany who support you and help you like learning the language yeah obviously i'm kind of somebody who is so open and i'm interested in social activities so i love making new friends so i love knowing new things so i got a lot of good german friends here because when i came here i was living with a german family and they were very supportive to me wherever i need so like it was a good start for me um especially when it comes to the language so like i don't feel like i don't feel lonely i got a lot of people who are helping me here obviously so what was your first impression of germany like when i came to germany i just wanted to go home because it was like very cold for me like the weather and other things like what was your first impression of germany yeah the first impression of germany like i got that when i was in italy like mm -hmm. when I, what i told you when this guy was encouraging me that in germany you have good universities you have good school and education is easier in germany 
So I think that was the first impression I got when I come to Germany. So I was like making a lot of researches in internet, like I see like a lot of people are coming to Germany here for study. So like that was a very good impression for me. Mm -hmm. And what was the funniest thing you um, experienced in Germany when you came like the first six months? For me, it was snow because I hate cold weather. So when I saw snow for the first time in my life, I freaked a little bit out. So what was like the strangest or funniest thing you experienced in Germany? Yeah, I think that was the language because the first day I had the language is like, <laughs> am I in a new world? <laughs> because I was living with German people, so mm -hmm. they cannot speak English. So whatever I want to say, I have to do it with action yeah. for them uh -huh. to understand what, what I really mean. So that was like, it was so it was so hectic for me and it was so funny for me. If they want to talk to me also, it's a problem because they don't know how to talk to me. So like you were using sign languages and... Yeah. <laughs> And what was the first German word? Like, can you remember that? Yeah, the first German word, I think my, my friend told me, like, the, the devil and the V, like we use it in English, mm -hmm. is in German, it's, it's like, it is change. Okay. So that was the first thing I learned in German, in German, in German, you know, German word. Mm -hmm. Like, the, those two letters are, are changed, you know. So like I was, I was. It was very hard for me to understand what he mean about that. These two letters are changed. Mm. <laughs> but um, like, therefore, do you think that German language is like impossible to learn? Like many people tend tend to say German language is so hard, it's like impossible to learn. Nothing in this life is impossible. It depends on the way you take your things, and de it depends on how you believe in yourself. Obviously, one has to say it is a very difficult language compared to English, obviously. And it needs a lot of challenges. And it, like, when I say challenge, it, it needs a lot of time to, mm -hmm. to if you want to speak if, or if you want to learn German language. Um, you have to give your time. You have to spend your time to. And what I also find about it, like, you have to, you have to get social contacts. Not only going to school is mm -hmm. going to make you speak the language. But like speaking with the German natives, because it's a language that makes you dream every day. And as you live here in Germany, like without any family members, or do you have family members in Germany? Yeah, not directly family members, I would say, but like I met a lot of Gambians here, so I feel like I got family. So, but you, you don't feel like lonely because like you live here without your mom and dad or siblings? No, obviously. Um, I don't feel like lonely, but sometimes I have home pain, you know, I miss, yeah. my, I miss my family. But that maybe does go only some time, but when I go outside, when I meet Gambian people, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just some, somebody who is very socialism. So when I'm ever, whenever I'm pe with people, like, I feel okay. So you said, like, you lived um, with a German family when you came to Germany? And, like, how was the food change, like, the food culture, like, we cook complete different than general people do like super kanja or venachin it's like they they don't know something like that so how was the food change like going from super kanja to currywurst and pommes yeah at first it was not very easy for me because we have a different taste you know so i was struggling so um, the problem was when when they cook for me like i used to eat a little portion of it and they were just surprised I told him that like I, I need a time to to get used to this kind of food because um, we have a different taste and we have a completely different type of food. But what I also what I also what I also found lately is like they also love African food because I once cooked, so they 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 share the same taste with me, and it was like it was lovely. So what did you cook for your German family the first time? Like, what was the dish? Yeah, I cook benachin because that's the only thing I can cook. You know? <laughs> and it's more so easy. you only can cook benachin and Yeah, I can like... only cook benachin and it's more easy. You know? <laughs> Was it good? Yeah, obviously it is good. <laughs> and um, like, as you lived in Germany for quite some time, did you face any hardships like racism? Yeah, when you said hardship, I would say yeah, I face hardship because... Um, um, if you like, if you don't live in your own country, it's always not easy. Especially when Germany is another kind of war. I would say it. it's it's its own part 
it's just lives in an odd universe, you know. Yeah. When you come to these rules and regulations, especially when you're not having document, it's very hard in that point. Like, but um, racism, I would say it. I've never experienced that in Germany, even though people are counting them as the most racist um, country in the world. But personally, I've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. But do you know somebody who will experience any racism in Germany? Yeah, I do used to be with friends who always complain about it. And they always say they've been racist. But I always feel like you nobody should be not so, nobody should be annoyed or angry with racism because we are not living in our own, own country. So when they are when they are making race, racial abuse against us, what what we got to do because that's not going to change anything in in our personality. Then we just have to be it. Just just concentrate on what you are doing. That's what is important for you. Mm -hmm. So um, one aspect for you to come to Germany obviously was education. So what do you think about young Gambians who come to Germany and only think like I'm gonna get here, get the fast money and build a house, home and stuff like that? They tend to do illegal things. Like what what like what do you think about that? Like. Yeah, you know, in life, um, people have different mentalities and people have different beliefs. Um, like, to my own, to my own personality and to my own beliefs and the the ideologies that I got in myself is like, um, one is only secured in your life when when you got good education, because like um, when I was young, my my parents used to tell me this: education is the only compound that no enemy can eliminate, mm -hmm. and no war can destroy. So it means when you got it. You got everything in you. Money comes last. So being in illegal stuff, oh sorry, illegal stuff, mm. try to get money. Maybe today it, it has a future. Today, presently, it has it has a beneficial for you. But in the future, it makes nothing for you. So, like I would, what I would try to tell young Gambians, like mm. we are we are potential. We got everything. We are in the building point of our time. When we use our mentality, when we use our brain, because here we we have access to everything so let's use the time go to school develop ourselves we'll be once need back home so with this development that you got in yourself when you go you make lo you make a lot of money that you, you don't even expect but today is the time that we have to invest our brain and we have to invest ourselves not looking for money so um, there's also a big topic going around like the young Gambian community here in Dortmund especially like as we got a new president you know Adam Abaro, um people are very afraid that they will be sent back as if like even though there are like like you said like going to university having a good education or even working and um, some of them are afraid like being back sent back so what do you think about that yeah i think it's a it's a concern obviously it's a concern that people are having this kind of you know scared and other stuff um, but when you look at it i don't think just a country changes and everybody is going to be deported mm. this is politics it does not take like that just concentrate what you're doing. When you are potential, when you achieve what you want to achieve, you so, see your vision. Like, let's take this example. Like, I'm a young Gambian. Okay, I come from a small city, let's say Bansang or something. And then I take the back way to come to Europe. And then I tried, like, having, like, learning German language and then getting a job and then being sent back i think like you will feel like the whole journey you took was a waste you know what i mean the whole journey you took is a waste but that's not the end of your life that's what you have to guard in your mind it's not the end of life what is important like what i always believe in myself when i'm sent back home when i'm sent back home i still have a life to live mm. i'm still young i can i can do something I can obviously do something, but why will I be sent back home? I will not just be picked up and sent back home. I have to do something wrong to be sent back home. This is what people have to understand. I know when you are developing yourself here, they know they are, you are developing yourself. Obviously, today they are they are spending on you, but tomorrow you you gonna be beneficial to the state. 
So um, in the future, do you think that he will go back to Gambia after some time? Or do you think that you're going to live here in Germany like till you are elderly and then go back? Or like other people say they will stay in Germany till they die and only their corpse are going to go back? Obviously, I'm a, I'm a young African. And I have this mentality that we are the young people who can build up Africa. Mm -hmm. As I told you at first, like my vision is to come to, my vision coming to Europe is to develop myself. Because like what I see, like in Europe here, you are you have all access to kind of education that you want to have. So when I build up myself and I know that I'm fully potential, obviously, one day or sooner or later i'll go back home because i want to serve my country mm -hmm. not only my country but africa in general because i believe that um africans they need long, young people like me to 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 develop yourself go back home help your people mm -hmm. let them understand the value of what you are doing let them understand their own value i think this this is what we lack in africa all the blacks that are living in europe the qualities that they have when they go back home, we're not gonna be like this. Maybe we'll not even struggle to come back to, to come to Europe. So we have to make it here, but make in the sense that with knowledge, mm. go back and invest that knowledge in our country and help the young people who are growing up. So um, if you ever had the chance to go to another country, like except Germany from Italy, like when you come, came to Italy, um, if you had to go, like, the chance to go to another country, what country would that be and why? Today I see myself in Germany, mm -hmm. so I believe that I'm comfortable here. And because I, am, I always feel like I'm on the right track towards my, towards my dream, to mm -hmm. achieve my dream, to achieve my objects and goals. Um, I can't say the future, what is what is going to happen. But like, I would have loved to go to any of the English speaking countries except the UK. <laughs> Maybe Canada or US. Mm. Because I feel like it's going to be easier for me to, to, to be on the fast track. Okay. To get to, to, the, to the, 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 the highest point of my life that I want to get. But also living here is not something that I take it something bad you know it's, it's okay for me right now I'm not thinking of going to any other place and um, what I'm thinking right now I just want to focus on my future and achieve going to university and make my studies mm -hmm. and like how did your journey influence you personally like the experience you had how did it influence you did it make you stronger and like make you like have more belief in your dream the journey has helped me a lot in, in my life. It makes me see the kind of life that different people are living. Mm -hmm. um, you will see that home country is always the best. But it's also important to know that other people also are living outside there with different life. We're all human beings, but um, we all have different concepts and you know, different mentalities. So going to another country, you, you, you have a lot of experience. So it, it makes me to have you know, it makes me to have a personal belief in me that, you know, we can make it wherever we go, no matter how, how hard the situation is. So I think it, it has motiv motivated me a lot, which will always be a, a part of my life. And it will, it's always going to keep me stronger than ever. And what would you advise young Gambians, like who are right now in, Germ in Gambia watching the show, like what would you ever advise them? to like, would you rather say they, would, they should stay in Gambia and help developing the country? Or like, when they have a dream like you, like they should take the back way? Obviously this, I think this um, question is, is a little bit tricky. Because if I'm to tell young Gambians to stay in Africa um, and develop themselves there, maybe on the other part, point of view, some will understand, but some will not understand. Because today, right now, I'm sitting here. Maybe they also have the intention of sitting like I'm sitting here. Because, like, I would take example of myself when I'm in Africa. If somebody asks me to stay in Africa, what I'm going to feel. Mm. So, but what I can give to young people is, like, 
whatever you are doing you have to believe in yourself and believe that you're gonna make it in life believe that you have to achieve your dreams and whenever you achieve your dreams never forget back home because we are needed there whether you want to stay in Africa or you want to come to Europe but try to develop yourself someday go back home um, therefore I wanted to go a little bit back to your story and um, I wanted to ask you like is there a difference between like Germany and um, Italy like um, the refugee camps for example are they the same or like how people um, behave towards you and how they um, speak towards you yeah i cannot i cannot make them more different on that because in italy i don't stay in refugee camp mm. okay. so in germany also here i was lucky that i've never spent a day in a in a refugee camp but concerning to what people are saying or the stories that i got from other people i think it's more better in germany here than in italy and that of the life of people i think all white people are I would not say they are all the same, but like they all have like the same, like the same kind of living. Like they are no more, they are not very interested in you if they don't know you. Mm -hmm. Like they, they are so close to you or they are so open to you when, when you have a contact with them. So like this loneliness is like everywhere. What I experienced from Italy and Germany. So like as we are not as young Gambians who are not living anymore in um, in our home country, how do you feel like um, having this loss of cultural effect in a European country? Like I'm talking in general, like there are Gambians living in Italy, um, UK, Germany or somewhere else here. And I feel like there's this like lake of culture. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I think like right now, wherever you go to you find gambians so um everywhere so maybe it at at the force is it's always difficult because you are lonely you know but when when it start going outside you're gonna meet a lot of people and i think as time goes on you find a lot of friends and maybe the culture comes back but at the starting it's never easy yeah so like um like when you live Obviously, we're not living in like a Muslim country. We are living in a Christian country. Um, was it hard for you to cope with that? Like, like I just said, like the culture changes, and like, was it hard for you to cope with that? Like, um, the food. Like we said, we talked about it before with the super uh, with the bandage. You said you could bandage. Like, um, how did you cope with that? Like, not being in a country like with Muslim values. Yeah, we are not living in a Muslim country, but Germany has a lot of Muslim. Mm. We have a lot of Muslim people here. Um, maybe it's not gonna be the same as my homeland, where wherever you go, you just see a Muslim. You you can just do, you can pray wherever you wanna pray. So uh, I think it just depend on what what you're going to do, because um, they give right to everybody to practice your to practice your religion. So if you cannot go outside to pray, you, you can obviously do it in your house. So I think religion is important here, and they have been given chance to read. Like as we're speaking of um, religion, and and in Germany they have we have like this like um, backflash or like you could say fight right now with this like Muslims and Christian. Like what happened? Um, I don't know if you could, if you could quite remember. The um, New Year's Eve in Köln, there was like this um, consultation, and um, do you feel like there is also like this pressure, like because like when we are in in Gambia, we don't feel like like you are Christian and I'm Muslim. Like, what do you see this here in Germany? How do you feel about that, like here? We yeah, having your religion is not written in on anybody's face. Mm. I think it's a belief. So. What do you believe in you? That's what you're gonna practice. Um, like what is happening here? I think it's a, um, it's a misunderstanding. Mm. Not um, whatever is happening here is like Muslims doing it. Yeah. Some some people can be born in a Muslim country, but the faith is they are not they are not Muslims. So this is what people try to understand. They have to understand. 
religion is a faith. Mm. So when you got this faith in you, it's between you and God, not between you and people. So me bearing a Muslim name or a bearing a Christian name, that does not purify me to be a Muslim or purify me to be a Christian. But the faith that I have purifies me to be who I am. Um, another topic what I wanted to talk about with you is like when we're on the religion topic. Um, some people say like when you're in Europe there is no God. You could say like God is not seeing you and you could do whatever you want like drinking alcohol and like fighting. Like this is what I experience the most. Like young Gambians going on the street drinking and then like fighting and such things. And these are the people who are going to be sent most. But these are only uh, um, also the people who are going to complain. So what do you think about that like on this conversation? God is not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, some people may tend to say that, like, God is, um, is not here. He can't see you. You can do whatever you want. This is Euro. Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> I think this is funny. <laughs> God, is not, God is not in Europe. I, this is the first time I, I, had that, I had that impression, you know. Yeah, but I believe, um, yeah, the faith, that's what I was saying, the faith, you know, like the belief you have between you and God. If you truly believe in God, you know wherever you go, God is there. Because God is even you. You have God in yourself. You have God in what you believe. You have God in your heart. So I think what is important, whatever you are doing, just try to do good. So that is important. Even God is not seeing you. Even if you believe God is not seeing you, but to your personal life, to your personal health, to your future, do something that is good. Do something that is going to lighten you tomorrow. It's important. So drinking alcohol, make, even God is not seeing you, but it's not good for your health. <laughs> You're not doing that for God. You're doing that for yourself. So like, as you were here in Gambia, uh, in Germany, you said like you have like, you met new friends. And like when you meet together, like what kind of topics do you talk about? Like, do you talk about like Gambia or do you talk about the harsh hardships or like the language or and also do you speak in English or do you speak in German? <laughs> yeah, um, I love speaking in English most mm -hmm. because I think I'm more more fluent in English yeah. than any other language because that's the language that I've been learning since I was I was so young. But like when I am with my Gambian friends, you know, we, we speak in our mother tongue. Even if the Germans are there, normally we have German friends who normally used to complain. No, you have to speak in Germany. I say, oh, when you people, when you people are sitting, you speak in your mother tongue. So it's it's quite often for us also to speak in our mother tongue. So this is good. Then we don't have to forget our culture so soon, you know. Well, like, what kind of feelings do you get like when you're talking in your mother tongue? When I mean, like with other young Gambians, like you get the feeling. I think you got this feeling of being a little bit home. Yeah, I feel like I'm home, you know, I feel like I don't lose my culture, I feel like I don't lose my way, so it's important for me and always make me feel proud of myself. And in the future, do you think of like um, perhaps marrying and building a family, having a family here in Germany? No, obviously not in Germany. Oh, why? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe um, I already got a fiancé, so Oh, um, I'm just, I'm just comfortable with my fiance, and I think it's the person I want to build up my life with. But not in Germany. But not in Germany. Why? No, obviously not. <laughs> well, why? They yeah, have but to what I'm like saying, some... I already got my fiance, so. <laughs> so you're going to move? Do you think that you feel like you're going to move, or is is your fiance? I don't going know to if my fiance, Germany? if you, my fiance wants to come to here, it's, it's no problem. She can come here, but if she wants to stay in another part of the world, it's okay for me. But what is important, I. I got, I got a fancy, so I'm not I'm not ready to to marry he. So like your concept is like studying, getting your job, and then marrying somewhere else, or how do I like how do I um, have to understand this? Because like most people, when they get like um, a, st a life here, when they build up a life, they tend to bring their wives or fiance up, and then live here. So like this is not your life concept, but why like? Yeah, I said I am focused on the present. What future is gonna bring for me at, 
I don't actually know. Right now, what I'm concentrated on is how I can achieve my dreams, how I can study, go to university and achieve, you know, get my, um, my, my, my degrees. So right now, that's important for me. What comes after that, I have to, I have to also challenge that. But right yeah. now, I am just concentrated on my future. And I don't know if my fiance is going to love to stay in Germany. She, she has her own opinions. Mm -hmm. If she wants to leave you, I want to leave with her. But I'm never planning to leave and die here. Okay. I want to go back home someday. <laughs> As we are speaking of university, how did you get into a German university as somebody who did not speak the language, obviously? Like, did you make a like, special course to get into the university and who paid for it? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm doing the German German course. Um, so let me say, since I came here, I was doing the German course. Mm -hmm. like, um, before they were paying for me, the this, this state was paying for me, but I, I reached to a level where I have to pay for myself. Mm. So um, right now, the course that I'm doing, like is the final course that when I'm successful with it, I can go to university. So I'm paying that for myself. And um, like, do you, so you, you work for that, for, for the money to pay your course? No, I don't work for the money. You don't work? So <laughs> no, how I'm do not, you get the money? Yeah, no, it? I'm not working. I like the little support that I come, I, I, I get from the start, um, from the, from the state, that's what I'm using to pay my course. It means I have to, I have to limit myself what I'm doing with the money that they give me as a support. As a final statement, would you say that you are living a comfortable life? Like a life you are like... No life is comfortable, obviously. Even those people living in mansions, you know, or even those people living in palaces, the, the life, life is never comfortable. You always have, you always have, um, you know, obstacles to it. What I'm saying, what I would say is I am on a point of getting to my dream. Mm -hmm. That is important for me. But life, nobody lives comfortable. You only live comfortable when you die. <laughs> That's quite a hard statement. And uh, thank you for uh, coming here and having this inter interview with me and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was have, let's have a talk, but this was also only part one of our documentary. There is going to be a following part two, where we show how Mr. Carney is living and how he is coping with the German university. Thank you for watching. This is Jemina Tujalo and GAM TV United.